it kind of loses something. Yeah, right. Uh, with the lamb, I think it the lamb is almost overpowering. Yeah, doesn't work as well with the lamb. We make beautiful wine on the east end of Long Island in New York. There are over 60 vineyards where I live. Some have compared my boutique wine region to a mini version in the Napa Valley. So when the Wine Press Long Island asked me to give them a recipe for lamb, I was totally thrilled. So I decided to share with them my mint and rosemary crusted rack of lamb. Then they asked me to pair my lamb dish with a few local wines. Here's the problem. Mint is a challenging spice to pair with wine. And having mint with wine can have the same effect on your taste buds as drinking orange juice after brushing your teeth. Today I'm going to show you how to make this outstanding mint and rosemary crusted rack of lamb. And then afterwards, I'm going to serve three winemakers my lamb and see which wines go best with the dish. They're also going to give us the inside scoop on wine topics I've always wondered about, like screw caps versus corks. Which wines should you age and which ones should you drink right away? And why is it that Bordeaux blend became the reference standard? Once you've washed your lamb chop, make sure you pat it down so it's nice and dry. This rack of lamb comes from New Zealand, and in New Zealand, they're exceptionally careful how they raise their sheep. Season your lamb chop with a generous amount of fresh ground Celtic sea salt on all sides. In a bowl, mix three tablespoons of honey to two teaspoons of Dijon mustard. Brush it all over the lamb chops generously. Finally mince up equal parts of mint and parsley, roughly two tablespoons of each. Chop up some fresh organic rosemary, about one tablespoon. If you can, add it to a mortar and pistol and muddle it together. That'll release a lot of the oils and the aromatics. Press those beautiful muddled greens all over your lamb chops. The key to making a perfect lamb chop is to use a probe. You put it in the center of your lamb chop, and if you get the inside temperature at 125 degrees, it will be perfectly medium rare. You can cook it in the oven. Just try to get the temperature of that oven between 375 and 400 degrees. Or you can cook it on the barbecue. It'll take about 25 minutes to cook. Let's see what these experts believe pairs perfectly with mint and rosemary crusted lamb chops. Meet Richard Olson Harbage, the winemaker at Bedell Cellars. Kip and Susan Bedell planted their first grapevines here in 1980 and rooted Bedell Cellars. After finishing his plant science degree at Cornell University, Rich worked his first vintage on Long Island in 1983. Shortly thereafter, in 1986, Rich wrote the North Fork of Long Island American Viticultural Area application to the federal government and won approval for the new appellation. I don't know what that means. But it's a big deal because since the mid-1970s, when the first vines were planted here on the North Fork of Long Island, we became a recognized wine region. Now, 50 years later, we are a destination for wine enthusiasts. Rich and I are friends, and we've shared in each other's passion for food and wine. North Forker and Wine Press asked me to do a lamb dish, and they asked me to pair it with local wines. I love your wines. Thank you. Big fan forever. When I said that, yeah, I, I definitely want to pair it with a local wine, but I put mint on it. I know that your wines can stand up to the mint. We just got to figure out which ones are the best. I'm sure one of them will work. I'm not even worried about it, but I'm just curious to find out which ones. Yeah. I was thinking about this. This is like probably one of the most ancient wine pairings. If you go back in time, you know, and where wine began and they were probably eating a lot of lamb. Yeah. Mint, I don't know. Mint, I don't know. I know that uh, uh, you want to hear a record screech. You mentioned mint <laughs> at, at any, uh, you know, you know how that works. Well, but. I was just at a Greek uh, restaurant down in Fort Lauderdale a few weeks ago, and, and a friend of mine went, asked for mint jelly with lamb chops. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's like, well, 
Excuse me? They were very gracious about it though, but I know what you mean. Yeah. So this is interesting that you have it on top as a as a, as a like crust. A crusted herb. Yeah, I do mint and rosemary. Very interested in trying that. Why don't you pick one to start Let's with? Let's try it with. Go with your. Maybe, uh, we'll go lighter to heavier. Okay, sounds good. 2020, and we're a little bit nice. I mean, that's delicious. The alcohol isn't very high. You know, we, most of our wines are going to be less intoxicating and more refreshing than a lot of West Coast bourbons, where they may not be as food friendly in that case, where these. There's a little edginess to them. There's a little, there's a little acidity in there. Right. So, do you have a temperature that you try to internal? To? Yeah, I start at like 127, and then I try not to serve it for a few minutes so it hits 130. Take it out at 127. Yeah, yeah. that's what I do. Nice. Yeah. See what that'll do with the lamb when I right. serve you. I haven't used my fork yet, so it's okay. I'll put that on your plate. Oh, I'm looking forward to this. Year. I think that kind of stands up. I'm happy with that. This is a new release Cabernet Franc 2022. The 2022 vintage is probably one of the best that it's had. And it's still a baby, and so it's going to continue to get rounder and a little fuller and get better. Wow. It is so good. Cab Franc is probably more similar to Pinot than it is stylistically to Cabernet Sauvignon. It has a, a problem because it has the same first name. Mm -hmm. So people expect it to be something that it's not. This is delicious. And wow, it goes incredibly mm. well. I mean, it's really good. This is a nice pairing. The lamb is just, it's some of the best lamb I've ever had. It's so subtle and, and just juicy. It doesn't come across as overly, you know, a gamey that Thank some you. lamb can, can become. It's Thank love, you. it's just beautiful. Thank you. You're empty. I got a little bit more. Why isn't there more lamb in the U.S.? Nah, I think maybe the cattle industry has the market cornered on advertising. Yeah. You know, um, remember that when lamb introduced itself to the United States was through the immigrants, and the immigrants couldn't afford to just slaughter a, an animal after having it for less than a year. So they had to basically serve mutton, mm. and w which we <laughs> significantly differently. Right. If you have a mutton chop, you will not be as happy. <laughs> right. Very gamey. Again, this is all hypothetical. Yeah. I know in Greece, you can't get a decent piece of steak. It's tough. Right. Even in Paris, like it's hard. Like I went to Paris and when I, I went to one of these three star Michelin restaurants that served like the best steaks, cool. I was not impressed at all. Can't knock them on the cheese though. No. Oh. <laughs> they send us all the garbage. Yeah. <laughs> Did you know it? <laughs> and, and send the wine too, by the way. Sometimes, <laughs> yeah. And one of the things I, I found, I was in Bordeaux last year and there's a long tradition of serving um, reds with fish and seafood dishes, yeah. white fish, especially cod. You know, as a generalization, you're <laughs> almost better off having a white wine with a fish, but that's, for me, that's never the case. It's mm. like, what, how does it taste? You know, why be racist? <laughs> Right. Why choose white over red? Don't be wine racist. Just don't, don't be a wine racist. Just enjoy the. <laughs> <laughs> Might have to edit that part of the yeah, video. Yeah, that's not <laughs> So this is the Malbec. Yes. The what year this is that? This is the twenty Malbec. Twenty. Yeah. I love the nose. This is a different animal again. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that it extracts all the pepper notes out of both, both dish and the Malbec. Flavor. I liked it better by itself. It becomes peppery. like big pepper bomb like all yeah. of a sudden all you taste yeah is yeah for sure great i agree so we're getting into the blend carrier yeah. taste taste red this is a red that uses all the red grapes that we grow 50 percent merlot 20 percent syrah a uh, little bit of malbec a little bit of cabernet franc and your your vineyards are sustainable Dang. and the idea about that is to integrate um more eco-friendly practices, some organic practices, some biodynamic practices, some traditional practices that actually work really well. So we're not reinventing the wheel. We're just trying to be more careful, letting the, the terroir, letting the climate and soil speak through the wines a little bit more rather than manufacturing a beverage, if you will. We are allowed to do lots of things in the wine business to alter flavor, to change sugar concentration, acid concentration, 
use flavorings, additives. There's all kinds of things we're allowed to do, none of which appears on the label. That's not really interesting to me. I agree 100%. That doesn't turn me on. What turns me on is being able to let the grapes make themselves into wine, essentially with guidance. We can't, they can't do it by themselves. It's inherently interventionist. I'm, I'm blessed to have grown up in a culture where mm. there is no complexity. Salt, pepper, lemon. I mean, that's mm -hmm. in oregano. Like, those are the mm. seasonings, right? You can put whatever you want. Yeah, sure. Right? And, exactly. And sure. And, 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 some, and sometimes that's okay, but not when it becomes a norm. Somehow, some way, like slapping on all these extra things to compensate for poor quality substances, ingredients, somehow that became the norm in this country, and it's kind of saddening. So it's refreshing to see it and taste it in the wine, because this wine lacks for nothing. I'm not drinking this going, oh, you know, I sure wish he ran that through a fish bladder. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Fish bladders work really well, I'm actually. I'm sure, but I'm but not I haven't <laughs> used it in uh, 30 years. I think chefs and winemakers some, can sometimes get caught up in, like, they need to do, they need to feel like they're, they have to intervene more. Right. They have to add more. They have to add more things. They have to do more things, more oak, more sauce, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. In order to validate their importance into in the process, right. I think. I know winemakers like that. Uh, and I used to do that when I was younger. I felt like I needed to put my stamp on things and I was copying techniques from the old world. Yeah. Doesn't work. Right. This is not the old world. Right. It's not the West Coast either. Right. Oh yeah. We're kind of like geographically and stylistically right in the middle. I can taste the difference between those wines and a Long Island wine. And I really do seek out a lot of the Long Island wines. I'm not sure if it's because I'm from the region and I'm used to it, but I do enjoy the taste and the, and the differences that come in drinking the wine that comes from Long Island. I really do. Cheers. Cheers. So, just finishing up with the overall experience with the taste in the lamb, Actually, the taste wine and the lamb taste, it kind of, again, I enjoy this a lot better on its own. I think uh, so. I don't, I don't feel that I wouldn't, I wouldn't be pushing it away if someone poured it to me while I was having this lamb. But I feel that the Cab Franc, I'd be like, can I have more of that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 I agree. And this is your Bordeaux blend, so to speak. This is our top wine. Oh yeah, and we're using Bordeaux varieties. Stylistically influenced by Bordeaux. Using Bordeaux as a, as a, as a kind of model is nothing new. Almost every great wine region, including California, has done it because they are the, the emerald city of the wine world. What is the dominant great in, in, in this? This blend? is uh, Petit Verdot driven, yep. so it's 48% Petit Verdot. Never disappoints, man. This uh, is absolutely amazing on its own. The, this dish strips it, I feel, of all the mm. wonderful characteristics this is a multi-level experience with the wine. It's this tears and flavors, and they all come together, but they, they marry perfectly. Then you add this to it, and it's like whoosh, flat for me. In my map, I, you know, it's what I experienced. Yeah. Where the Cab Franc, it was like, uh, yeah. I, I find it completely back, fast. I go back to that, too. I think this, this like with a, with a classic filet mignon, yes, whole different game, mm -hmm. yeah. or even a roast duck different i want to try this again well i'll have you back one day we'll try it without the myth let's do salt and pepper and see what how these wines hold up to it i'm yeah. very curious to find i'll out. come tomorrow what's up <laughs> <laughs> sounds wonderful man thank you so much thank you i loved i loved having you here man thank you delicious everything was great can i sit at this table again you could sit at this table <laughs> meet russell and susan hearn russell started his career as a winemaker in western australia he gained working experience in New Zealand, France, and regions across the United States. In 1990, he came to Long Island. He moved on to co-own and manage Long Island's first custom facility, Mattituck's premier wine group in 2000. And recently, the Hearns purchased Lieb Cellars, where Russell has served as head winemaker since 1993. And Susan developed her passion and knowledge of wines in her 30s. In 2008, she was inspired to launch her own label, Suru Wines, which is a combination derived from their first and last names. So this is one of my signature dishes, and everybody loves it, but it's incredibly hard to pair with a decent wine. The minx causes a lot of aggravation. <laughs> I had no doubt in my mind that something you created would go very well with this. I like lamb every which way. So I've had all of your wines, and I'm not trying to keep that a secret. 
I adore all of them. So I know these on their own are spectacular. But I've seen some funky things happen when you try to have it with the mint. No, mint's a wonderful spice, but a tough pairing spice. Which one do you want to start with? Which one do you think will... And obviously Merlot and Cam Franco are what we grow best out here or the most of. So um, well, we, we could go in that order. Let's give it a shot. Okay. This is the 2020. 2020. This is the current vintage. Obviously Long Island Reds, cool climate Reds have, you know, a good amount of acidity, which, which carries the wine and makes them much, you know, very fruit, fruit friendly. I think actually, you know, I think because of its age, maybe a 21 or even a 22 Merlot would be a little bit too fruit forward. We're, this has got a little bit of bottle age to it, so. Uh, wow, this is great. It's interesting because when I had the 19, I did not like it. I thought, and I, and I love the wine. I just want to be clear about that. 19 was a little bit cooler. Um, acid would have been a bit higher. It's one of the tough things in the modern world of wine. People want yesterday's wine. What's wrong with you, this wine? It's, it's 20, it's old. I mean, I want, I want something new. I mean, which is good for the winery owner because we used to be forced to, you know, cellar and, and, and warehouse and you know, inventory for now. But you think you can just get wine out there too early? Fresh whites, yes, but reds, no. Mm -hmm. Because it's a shame when people are, you're running out of the vintage and it's just coming to its peak. So unless people have cellared it, they're never going to taste it. That is possibly its best. Let me get new glasses and we'll try out. Uh, sure. We'll try another one. And the beauty of screw craps, we don't even have to taste it ahead of time to make sure it's all fine. <laughs> if you don't like it, it's the winemaker. It's not, it's not the closure. When would you prefer to use a cork over a screw cap? Sparkling wine. Sparkling wine. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, the technology of screw cap has, has continued to evolve. That, you know, when it originally started, it was tin liners. So it was just fresh, fresh whites, rosés, quick to market wines. You can pick the liners now and... Um, so we have, with, with all of our red wines, we, we pick these breathable liners. So they, they do age. Eventually they do age. Yeah. Winemakers are, con are control freaks. We can try to control you know, what's grown out in the vineyard and yields and barrel selection and you know, yeast selection and everything. And then you give up that control when you put a cork in the bottle. That's true. Yeah. I know with screw cap, it's, it's going to be the same. Every bottle is going to be exactly the same. And they're doing research where they take the same wines, some under cork, some under screw cap, same vintage, put them down, and then taste them 10 years, 15 years, whatever, and see how they, how they progress, how they age under different closures. And uh, the screw caps are holding out really well. Screaming Eagle is a good example. Screaming Eagle, I don't know how much it'd be a bottle now, probably $400 a bottle. <laughs> 10, 15 years ago, they... It's six packs, so they had three bottles in the six pack cork, three bottles screw cap. They they forced the customer to say, you know, what's wrong with screw cap? All right, I'm gonna just dig into this like a you know, not me little man. <laughs> the more herbal um, characteristics, you know, uh, brighter fruit of of cap Franc doesn't work as well with the lamb. You know, with mint, you know. Is that that I don't enjoy it? There's the, the dividing wall where it's like, okay, this wine is delicious. This mint is, this uh, lamb is delicious. Maybe we should live in two different, maybe we should have two different bedrooms. <laughs> yeah. If you want to elevate both. Right. You want to pick the correct wine right. to go with it. And so far, the Merlot uh, over the two, I think we all agree is, that's great. So Embers of Blend, our son-in-law, Who's the assistant winemaker? That's his wine. And this particular vintage, it's a blend of Merlot, Cabernet Franc, Cabernet Sauvignon, Petit Bordeaux, and Turaldigo. Turaldigo. 95% of all Turaldigo grapes are grown in Italy. And you managed to get some on Long Island. Like to take the credit, can't. Uh, Reagan Meter planted the vineyard about 10, 12 years ago now in South Hull. Spoke to the owner and sort of said, uh, you know, We'd like to lease it. And if we're going to do this, we want to, we don't want to just spot buy one year. We want to control the quality. So we've leased, you know, uh, the vineyard ever since. And as a blender, it adds that it adds a nuance without overpowering all the other components, which is what you want in a, in a blend. There's, there's a few varieties in the world that are better by themselves. You know, 100% Riesling, you know, Pinot Noir, uh, 
general Chardonnay probably, you know, most other varieties, you know, whites and reds um, <coughs> aren't complete. Right. You know, they, they, they have a lot of upfront or a lot of, a lot of tannin at the finish. And, and so with blending, you know, you're able to just fill in the holes. I love the amber. I think the amber is just a beautiful bottle of wine that you can have. If it'll hold up to this lamb with mint, that would hold up to your average steak. That would hold up to any kind of red meat, I think, for sure. I want to have a little bit more so I could say cheers. A little more there. Oh, I, oh that was bad. Just made it. Just made it. Oh, it's a blend. It's a blend. It's a blend. It's a, blend. It's a George blend. They, these, two, these two will blend well together. Uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> cheers. Cheers. To your health. I put together a playlist of my absolute favorite recipes right here. Check them out, and I want to know what your experience are with wine, maybe Long Island wine, or challenging pairings that you've found to be great. Thank you for watching.